Good morning and greetings in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Well, friends, as you are joining us at home, we invite you to either look on your computer or print out the bulletin and join us in the singing of the hymns and the responsive prayers in today's worship. Also, we invite everyone to uh, join in on the coffee hour following worship today at 11.30 to 12 o'clock noon. Then later, at 2 o'clock, we will have our online annual congregational meeting, and we do hope that you'll be able to participate in that important meeting. Also, uh, note that Tuesday we will be continuing our book study of the Book of Romans, and that will be at 7 p.m. So if you are interested in attending that online discussion, please do let us know. And next Sunday will be the first Sunday of the month, February already, and we will be sharing in Holy Communion. So we invite you for next Sunday's worship service to have bread and juice ready and available as we will share together the Holy Sacrament of Communion. Friends, Scripture says, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. As we enter into worship this morning, let us praise the Lord through a deep sense of gratitude. Amen. Thank you. Friends, the Lord is always at work in our life, leading us and guiding us. So let us now sing together the wonderful hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah.
And now let us have our prayer of the day. Holy God, we praise you through our worship. Guide us in our worship and receive our prayers of adoration. Help us, O Lord, to hear your voice among the competing claims of our day. Raise us up as your authentic witnesses. Amen. Well, friends, most assuredly, God guides us through grace. With a confidence in that grace, let us open our hearts and minds through our prayer of confession. Let us pray. Everlasting God, we confess our need for your wisdom and direction. Show us what you want us to serve you. Amen. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. God knows our hearts and is eager to forgive. Our strength is renewed. We are forgiven. God's power and grace are always with us. We will serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. Please rise for our glory to God. Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us show the sign of peace through a friendly wave. Amen. God bless you at home. Amen. <clears throat> Friends, let us now hear God's word to us from Holy Scripture. And we begin first with the Old Testament. In this passage of Scripture from Deuteronomy, God will raise up a prophet. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet, who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. We hear now, God's word to us from the Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter, where Jesus is at the temple. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teachings, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then, 
There was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed. And they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be God. to God. The Gospel of Mark, it records a number of significant events in Jesus' early ministries. Mark's Gospel always gets straight to the point and describes Jesus' actions especially. Jesus gets baptized. He flees then into the wilderness and is tempted by Satan. All that in just 13 verses. In today's reading, Jesus is accompanied by his disciples, and they arrive in the town of Capernaum, a village on the north shore of the Sea of Galilee. Jesus and the disciples enter the synagogue on that Sabbath, which would be, for the Jewish faith, a Saturday. Jesus teaches them all about the law of Moses, and the people have never heard those teachings quite like they are hearing them from Jesus. Scripture says that he taught them with incredible authority, not as the scribes. People immediately sense authority in Jesus' words. They also recognize, I'm sure, an authority in his overall presence and demeanor his sense of conviction in the words in which he speaks. Jesus is completely different than the prevailing religious leaders they had seen and heard. They have religious power, but they're not speaking with the kind of authority and authenticity with which they hear in the words of Jesus. Authority is different from power. Power is something external and scripture cautions us against the dangers of having power without a sense of responsibility authority is different from power in that authority comes from within people were drawn to jesus's inner authority Interestingly, we do not know the words that Jesus said on that Sabbath day in Capernaum that impressed people so much with his authority. Not even a single word in Jesus' sermon is recorded. But it fits with Mark's style of writing his gospel. He remembers again those special deeds and actions that Jesus did. A little less on the words. In Mark, there's no Sermon on the Mount. There are very few parables. In Mark's Gospel, there's not a lot of dialogues between Jesus and the disciples or Jesus and his adversaries. It's about action, what he does. Mark simply states that on that day, Jesus spoke with authority and impressed everyone. We may not have a great deal of power in our own lives, but if we speak the truth in love, and if we are guided by the Holy Spirit, and if our lives match our convictions, there's a congruence, what we say will have authority. What you say 
as people know who you are, what you believe in and how you live your life, your words will carry a tremendous amount of weight. Also, you're simply caring deeply about another person makes our words carry more weight. Hypocrisy diminishes our authority. Integrity builds it up. God gives us authority and wisdom as one of the gifts of the Spirit. Authority is a gift to inspire and encourage. While sometimes power can be used to control or manipulate, I like Proverbs 31, 26 that says, When she speaks, her words are wise, and she gives instructions with kindness. Kindness adds authority and weight to what we would have to share with one another. When Jesus concludes his teaching, Mark says that the tranquility of the synagogue is suddenly disrupted by a wailing of a man with an unclean spirit. Jesus commands the demon to leave the man, and the demon obeys. But the demon does not surrender quietly. There are shouts and screams. The demon puts up a fight before finally yielding. The demon is defeated, and the astounded people reply, What is this? A new teaching with authority. The first two chapters of Mark record Jesus calling the twelve disciples. They are directed first to preach the gospel, and then to cast out demons. There will always be demons for us to confront. We can think of demons as all things and all energies that oppose the truth. There will always be voices that reject Jesus and reject the work of the Holy Spirit. Today's demons are the voices that tear down instead of build up. They are voices that create walls that divide people. Demons are present in our lives individually and also throughout society and in the world. As Presbyterians, we have adopted what is known as a brief statement of faith which affirms that in a broken and fearful world, that the Spirit of God gives us the courage to unmask idolatries in church and culture. Idolatry is a demon. In the modern context, idolatry is a big lie about who God is, and a big lie about who we are. Idolatry is a big lie about all of creation and our magnificent creator. Demons surface in our midst when we live a lie or tell a lie, when we deny God's love. In Mark's Gospel, Jesus is asked about the greatest commandment he says, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. These words of Jesus point us to the underlying problem of our temptation to lie about our relationship with God and our called relationship of unity and justice and harmony with one another. Demons can actually possess us in ways that are blessed 
by society. Think of the unclean spirits of workaholism, living for work, neglecting family, friends, and service. Demons can be blessed by society in that of greed, never having enough, always wanting more, and doing whatever's necessary to get more. Greed. Or even busyness. That can be a demon that holds us back from really enjoying an abundant life that God has for us. Back in 2007, a reporter from the Washington Post wanted to conduct an experiment. And he wanted to do it with the world-renowned violinist Joshua Bell. The idea would be if he played Joshua Bell for simply spare change, incognito, in disguise, in a busy metro stop, in Washington, D.C., would anyone notice that it was Joshua Bell, the world-class violinist? So on a winter morning, Joshua Bell, he wore a black uh, jacket, and he also had a uh, baseball cap on, and he opened his violin case, and he began to play now, this is no ordinary instrument that Joshua Bell has. It's a multi-million dollar Stradivarius violin. Over a thousand busy commuters raised by him without paying any attention at all. They just streamed right by him, walking quickly while he was playing. He was ignored completely except seven people stopped to hear him. Some children were drawn to the beautiful music, but they were quickly rushed along by their parents. Joshua Bell received $32 in his violin case for his performance. Three days earlier, he had played the same music at the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts. It was a sold out concert, and the cheapest tickets for that concert were $100, at the very least. When Joshua Bell had finished playing at the Metro Station, there were no applause. You can see this on YouTube if you type in a Joshua Bell Metro Station, and you can see all these people going right by him. Well, the uh, reporter for the Washington Post received the Pulitzer Prize for this experiment. He proved his points. Americans are too busy to enjoy beauty around them, to take even just a few moments to appreciate and even recognize beauty in their midst. Well, in 2014, seven years later, Joshua Bell did a do-over Metro concert because it had made the news. This time, people knew that it was going to happen in advance. There were also other musicians that accompanied him as well, but he played the same exact music. This time, people filled the metro station. They were standing, eagerly awaiting, and of course, nowadays, they had their phones to record it. And at the end, there was great applause. People expected something magnificent the second time. Can people recognize something beautiful if they are not told to anticipate it. But it, it happens in their presence and midst. Could we recognize inspiring music in the midst of our everyday life? Could we recognize a priceless painting 
at a yard sale, a painting that would otherwise be in a, a museum. If we cannot stop to listen to one of the world's greatest musicians playing on a perhaps $3 million violin, what other beautiful things might we be missing out on in life? Beauty is all around us. Be sure to open your eyes and recognize it, see it. Jesus was different from all the regular teachers at the synagogue. Fortunately, people recognized it. The demon recognized it. Jesus calls us to join him in the breaking of the chains of evil to that which is good, that which is beautiful, to embrace that which is noble, artistic, and inspiring. Jesus came among us to break all those evil forces that keep us from experiencing the amazing, abundant life that God wants and gives everyone. Jesus continues to oppose all of society's demons that would seek to rob us of purpose, of gratitude, of meaningful sense in a, in a community of love and care. The demon is defeated by the power and the presence and the authority of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ gives us the authority over everything that would enslave us or diminish us or hold us back or divide us. Our calling is to participate in that power. The communion of saints, the church helps to inspire us, helps to strengthen us, helps to unite us with the glorious power of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Friends, let us rise as we affirm our faith together through the reciting of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day, he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, friends, for sending in your prayer requests. They are very important. This last week, we have received prayer requests for Jim Matson who had a stroke and was sent to Strong Memorial Hospital up in Rochester. He is showing progress and he is now uh, going through uh, physical rehab. And uh, so uh, the Matson family are very grateful for your prayers and support and we continue to keep them in our prayers. Let us speak to God. ever-present God, all-powerful God. Lord, we appeal to you in your goodness, in your guiding wisdom, 
in your ever-available presence to us. Lord, help us to sense when you are calling us and directing us to reach out with your love. Lord, it is with your love that we lift up others in prayer. Praying, Lord, for continued healing grace for Jim Matsett, that every day in his physical therapy finds him stronger and more whole. Bless him, Lord, with a deep sense of encouragement, strength. May he sense and know the power of prayer that surrounds him. And prayers, Lord, that he will be able to uh, return home after his physical therapy. And God, we lift up with grace Dan Disbro and his family. We pray, Lord, for his recovery, for his good health, and support for his family. Hear our concerns, Lord, in prayer for Reverend Gordon Webster, who is battling COVID. Work through the medicines and treatments he's receiving and the prayers that he has. We are also mindful, Lord, of a young woman who is just recently now taking treatments for her cancer. We pray, Lord, for her medical team that together through prayer and medicine and good care and her courage that her body will be free of cancer. And God, we lift up Jack for physical rehab and strength. For Gary, blessings for his physical rehab and encouragement. And also, Lord, for Carolyn that each and every day finds her more comfortable and has more mobility in her physical rehab. We are remembering Marilyn Fitch in our prayers, Lord, at the manor. Rick, who is dealing with health concerns, especially with his heart. We remember in our thoughts Betsy and David, for good health. For Rachel's brother in Illinois, we want the very best for him and his family. For the Taco family, in the midst of their grief and loss, may your comforting presence and the hope of heaven provide strength for the Taco family. And God, we pray for everyone who is facilitating the vaccinations. May they be effective and available for all people. We pray, God, for good health, for especially those who are in the hospital, who work and volunteer at hospitals. We pray, God, that people will be safe, respectful, and careful. Lord, hear our prayers for those who are in nursing homes. These are tough times for them. We pray, God, for their health and safety and support. God, we also are in prayer for our leaders. We, we pray, Lord, that you would unite us. Help us to work with each other, not against each other. Empower us to be agents of your love and your justice. And God, we also in our prayers lift up our environment, the beautiful creation in which you have entrusted to our stewardship. Help us, Lord, to express our deep gratitude for the beauty of all creation. And God, Hear our prayers also for our veterans. Lord, may they have whatever resources they need. Prayers especially for those who are struggling with employment or challenges of mental illness. We also pray, God, for our troops and their families. May they sense our gratitude. 
And God, we always pray for peace in our hearts, in our homes, in our world. May we be a light of your peace. And God, please now hear our silent individual prayers as we lift up, Lord, our loved ones in a silent prayer. Lord, we entrust our loved ones knowing that we are your children, that you love us beyond measure. And so we pray as you taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen friends we now have our final hymn Immortal, invisible, God only wise. rise now for our blessing and our benediction. And now as we are most assuredly united with God and united with one another, let us confidently go out into the world knowing that God loves us, Jesus Christ forgives us, and the Holy Spirit guides us now and into eternity. Amen. Thank you.